so Karen, you used to live here um, in the Travel Trust. You were actually married to the owner. I was, yeah. Um, would you like to tell me about your experiences here? Um, we've had quite a few. We've had um, sightings of ghosts, shadows, walking round the bar. Um, picture frames being taken off walls. Um, actually falling off the walls? Actually, the picture frames were screwed to the walls, but they've come off and actually hit a member of staff on the head. Really? Were they injured? Um, no, shocked. <laughs> shocked. We, we were cleaning in the morning and they actually thought it was me that had mm. done it. Um, but I was as shocked as what they were. Um, we've had menu boards being lifted off the hooks and dropped into people's drinks. Um, we've had pumps turned on at the back of the bar. There's been nobody there and the pumps have been turned on mm -hmm. and the beer's just started spilling. <laughs> um, lots of different things like that downstairs. Um, and then upstairs we've had um, footsteps from one end of the top floor through to the fire door. Is that from the, the very next floor? Is it the the, the like next that? floor where the residency is, mm -hmm. where we actually live. Um, at night time we've had footsteps which have come through one fire door, travelled full length of the pub and then the fire door's opened mm -hmm. and you've got up and thought, there's nobody else up here but us. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had a baby child, young child, crying early hours of the morning. I've got up several times thinking it was my own child in the next room, and it wasn't. Um, it's, it's just recurrence. We've had you know, customers, we've shut at end at night, we've been cleaning up, and a few have stayed behind, and they've seen people supposedly walking from one end of the bar to the other mm. but there's only been us in. But so you would have more like actual physical things happening down here and then just sounds yeah. up on the next Sounds floor. upstairs, mainly footsteps um, and the child who we've, we believe is a small boy mm -hmm. um, but downstairs it's been the happenings, things moving. Um, <laughs> We've actually had a, a member of staff who lived here, mm -hmm. who didn't come back to work. Oh, what happened to her? She, she was that scared. She had, she lived in, she had the first room on the top floor. Mm -hmm. um, she was convinced she saw, saw shadows under her bedroom door. Um, she tried blocking them with bin bags, <laughs> belongings, anything, because she was, she'd heard about the ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, and a few nights, she was that petrified. She wouldn't come out of her room. And then she was actually on the bar one afternoon and I was outside and she came running outside in tears and she'd been actually at the back of the bar and the three pumps just all went on consecutive. Turn on by themselves. Yep, yeah, and beer started pouring and as she went to actually switch the pumps off, one of the wooden boards at the top, which are actually screwed in mm -hmm. behind the lights, came off straight down in front of her and she absolutely petrified ran out white as a ghost and she's like the pumps have just switched on I come running in turn the pumps off and the boards on the floor mm. but there was only two other people in the pub on the lounge side mm -hmm. and nobody else well. <laughs> and she, it was the day off the following day and she went and never came back so she just left she just left left all the belongings upstairs and she rang it. She spoke to my son, who also worked here with me, a couple of weeks later, and said, "I cannot come back." She was absolutely petrified. So, Harry, uh, obviously you you're a regular here, mm -hmm, and uh, yeah. you've been coming here for quite a Since, while. Since uh, the early '60s, 1962. All right. Yeah, I was coming every weekend with my father's friend out because I was going to see at the town. I only got home every fortnight. Mm -hmm. I was coming here. I knew the landlord well, Mr. Francis and his wife. And the place is completely different to what it is now. It's all been rebuilt, not down. Yeah. Uh, drank in here when they, they had it for about ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was taken over and turned into about four different 
fun pubs, if you want to put it that way, you know. Okay. Uh, and I've never heard anybody say anything about it being haunted or manifestations or anything. But you've heard, I mean, obviously, oh, there heard. are some stories. Well, only the last uh, few months. Yeah. Uh, up to then, like, the landlady that was here before, Chrissy, mm. she never saw anything. She was here for about ten years. Mm -hmm. And I knew her very well. We used to go away on holiday together, like, you know. She never mentioned anything. And, uh, like I say, I've seen a couple of times when it's been quiet. Um, Someone just passed the corner of my eye, but could have been anything like, you know, you don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not saying there isn't ghosts, but I've definitely not heard anything here. It's since there was a few girls come over early on this summer uh, from Australia, and they were into spiritualism and all that. Mm -hmm. And they went and had a walk round upstairs, and oh, definitely there's a presence, and there's this, that, and the other. Then a the girl, Sammy, she was staying here, and uh, as soon as she spoke to them, she was seeing ghosts and hearing things all over the place, you know, just. Like so you, <laughs> in your opinion, they were influencing. I, I think they were just imagining it, uh, it figments of their imagination. Mm. There's other pubs around here where there is something going on. We've had a few spiritualists in mm. trying to look into it. Um, one particular person that presence is downstairs, they tend to appear early evening, night time, close of business generally. Mm. Um, and he tends to wander from where the kitchen is now mm -hmm. around the top of the bar to this area and then into the pool room where the dartboard is. Um, we were told that he apparently is called John um, and he was possibly an ex-member of staff from a long time ago. Um, and another gentleman was brought to Light, who was um, a regular here, um, who had a, a motorbike accident apparently just on the corner outside, mm -hmm. and he's another one that is apparently supposed to show his presence. So he still comes in even after he's passed on? Yeah. Um, the incidents obviously I started getting concerned when things were getting smashed and possibly somebody's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and the spiritualist said, he was writing down and he came back and, and said that um, the person was at ease mm. now, mm. but at the time that everything was happening, he wasn't happy with the changes mm. that were being made. I mean, we'd obviously come in, we'd completely gutted the place and redecorated and, and done everything, mm. and he was showing his unhappiness. Yeah, because sometimes that can stir up things, can't it, if you yeah. renovate houses? Yeah, that's what he seemed to think. Because we were making so many drastic changes and, and doing everything, that this spirit wasn't happy with the changes that we were making. Mm. But eventually, by the time we'd finished, which was towards Christmas, mm. everything went quiet mm. and no more happenings. And when this spiritualist came around, he said, he's, he's, he's happy mm. with what you've done and he'll not bother you again. I'm not saying I believe in ghosts or I don't believe in ghosts, but until I can come face to face with one, mm. I'm leaving it to speculate on it. My grandma, my granny, she was a she was a spiritualist, she was a medium, mm -hmm. and uh, she always used to say to me, if anything happens when I die, if there is anything, I'll come back and tell you, and I've seen nothing. I've right. seen her in dreams. Now, if that's the way a spirit comes to you in mm. dreams, seen a lot of dead people in dreams, if that's the way mm. they do it, I don't know. Have you been upstairs? I've been upstairs, yeah, a few times, there's nothing, there's a lot of old rubble knocking about in empty bedrooms and junk, you know, and I can't, I can't, I can't see it. I wouldn't, be fr I wouldn't be scared of spending the night in here on, on my own upstairs with no lights on, mm. wouldn't bother me. So in your opinion, uh, there's nothing here? No, it's just uh, hearsay, you know, our rumours build up on rumours and Mm -hmm. You know, Chinese whispers. That's all I can say. It is. All right. Well, right. Uh, it's good to get opinions from both well, sides. Yeah. If there was anything, I'd tell you that. Like, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I say, I'm spectral over it. Whether there is or not, but until I, s I believe in poltergeists. Mm -hmm. Now I've actually seen one of them, but I don't believe it's a spirit. I believe it's some kind of kinetic energy that gets together and goes berserk. Mm -hmm. 
and that was my daughter, something got into her one night in a bedroom, there's stuff lying around in the bedroom, the vicar came, and he was an ex-Navy man, Reverend Morgan, right tough bugger, he walked out and wouldn't go back in. Really? And she said, there's somebody in the corner, they won't let me go, let me go, and I just walked up to the corner, I said, will you, will you, they are bugger off, and it just went quiet. So, you tell me, <laughs> and that is gospel truth, I've got witnesses for that. But my daughter doesn't remember anything about it, even to this day. Mm -hmm. She was just out of it, laid under bed, and there was all sorts going on around it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, um, thank you very much for your yeah, time. Yeah, you're welcome, love. Thank you. Yeah, okay. As night approached, so did our lockdown. Do lost souls still visit this old public house? Find out next.